My name is Kara Marie Morris, and this is the Words in Season podcast. Thank you for joining me. This is part four of seven attitude adjustments. And you may be thinking, well, why am I adjusting my attitude? And how do I need to adjust my attitude? And who's the standard of this attitude adjustment? And how do you know that I need an attitude adjustment? Well, I am just looking at the seven churches in Asia and the things that Jesus said to them, he is saying to us today. He is saying to me today, and I can look at the word of God as the standard, and I can see if there are things that I have led in my life that I'm tolerating, that I'm doing, that don't look like his word, then I know that I need an attitude adjustment. So let's go to our foundational scripture for this series, Ephesians 4, starting in verse 22. It says, You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off the old self, which is being corrupted by deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds, and to put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. So I need, I know that my spirit has been born again as I accepted Jesus Christ, that I'm new in the attitude, I'm new in my spirit, and now I need that to be shown forth in the attitude of my mind. So what's in my heart is going to come out, and I want that to be expressed and to look like Him, to look like the Father God. So this week we are looking at part four, looking at the church of Thyatira. So thank you for watching the Words in Season podcast. Remember, you can find more episodes on Anchor FM, Spotify, on Apple Podcasts, on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. And remember that every time that you tune in, that Jesus has a word in season for you. So Jesus had a message to these seven churches in Asia. And these seven churches in Asia, they had some good, they had some bad, they had some things Jesus commended them on, and he had some things that they needed to change, some things that they needed to rearrange in their lives. And Jesus was willing to love them enough and cared for them enough to not just let them do their own thing, but to correct them and to allow time and a chance for them to repent. So we're looking at the church of Thyatira here this week. So this is Revelation and starting in verse 18. So Jesus commended them on their love, their faith, their service, their patient endurance and doing the greater works. But there was one thing that they began to tolerate. Like we looked at in the last episode, they began to compromise on. Compromise is trying to decide Is it better this way or is it this way? Is it my way or your way? And we looked at last time that it's always God's way. And this week we're gonna look at what did they tolerate in the church of Thyatira that Jesus said, you need an adjustment here. So Revelations 2 starting in verse 18, to the angel of the church at Thyatira, these are the words of the son of God, whose eyes are like blazing fire and whose feet are like burnished bronze. I know your deeds and your love and your faith and your servants and your perseverance that you are doing more now than you even did at first. Nevertheless, I have this thing against you. You tolerate that woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophet. By teaching, by her teaching, she misleads my servants into sexual immorality and the eating of food sacrificed to idols. And I have given her time to repent of her immorality, but she is unwilling. So I will cast her on the bed of suffering and I will make those who commit adultery with her to suffer intensely unless they repent in her ways and I will strike her children dead. And then all the churches will know that I am he who searches the hearts and minds and I repay each one of you according to your deeds. Now I say to you, the rest of you in Thyatira, to you who do not hold to her teaching and have not learned Satan's so-called deep secrets, I will not impose any other burden on you except to hold on to what you have until I come. And to the one who is victorious and does my will to the end, I will give authority over the nations. That one will rule with an iron scepter and I will dash them into pieces like pottery, just as I have received authority from my father. 
I will also give that one the morning star. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. So this is Jesus giving the message to the church at Thyatira. He was explaining that they did a lot of good things, but what were they doing? They were tolerating a false prophet. They were tolerating false teaching in their midst. Was there a woman who was actually named Jezebel? Most likely not. He was referring to Jezebel in the Old Testament. In 1 Kings 21, 25, and this is out of the message version, it says that Ahab, pushed by his wife Jezebel, and in open defiance of God, set an all-time record in making big business of evil. So Jezebel used her position as queen, not for good, but for evil to corrupt evil, to turn their hearts from the God of Isaac, Abraham, and Jacob, and turned it to Baal, to Baal worship. He Not only was she turning them in religious practice, she was literally going after them. She was going after them to kill all of the prophets. You see in Judges and these different people that they were hidden, that Obadiah hid a hundred judges of the kingdom, a hundred prophets of the kingdom, and then Elijah shows up. So there were still people left, but she was going after these people because she wanted them dead. She was using her influence for evil. And what is using influence for an ulterior motive called? Manipulation. So they were tolerating manipulation, false teaching. It was an inappropriate influence. She had an ulterior motive. She was trying to do something that was had her motive at heart and not the people she ruled at heart. So what was Jesus talking about here? He was talking about Jezebel being manipulating and them tolerating that. So what is manipulation? Manipulation is an inappropriate influence, having an ulterior motive, doing something nice for something to get something back or to be seen a certain way, constantly nagging, and even people pleasing is a type of manipulation to have them see you in a certain light or to try to get them to do something that you want them to do rather than just being honest and open and using real communication, but using manipulation to try to get your own way. So an example I wanna to use today to talk about manipulation, the story begins in Judges chapter 13. Judges chapter 13 and verse three, the angel of the Lord appeared to Manoah and said, You are barren and childless, but you are going to become pregnant and give birth to a son. And now see to it that you drink no wine or other fermented drink, and that you do not eat anything unclean. And you will become pregnant and have a son whose head will never be touched by a razor, because the boy will also be a Nazarite, dedicated to God from the womb. And he will take the lead in delivering Israel from the hands of the Philistines. So who is this person? We find out in Judges 16, we find out the story continues with Samson. So Samson, he was called of God, he was anointed by God, but he began to tolerate things in his life that should have never been there. One day Samson went to Gaza, where he saw a prostitute and he went in to spend the night with her. And the people of Gaza said, Samson is here. So they surrounded the place and lay in wait for him all night at the city gate. And they made no move during the night. And he said, at dawn we'll kill him. But Samson lay there only until midnight and he got up and took the doors of the city gate together with the two posts and he tore them loose and the bar and all. And he lifted it to his shoulders and he carried them to the top of the hill that faces Hebron. And sometime later, he fell in love with the woman in the Valley of Sorek whose name was Delilah. And the rulers of the Philistines went to her and said, see if you can lure him, manipulate him, use your inappropriate influence on him to show him the secret of his great strength so that we can overpower him, so that we may tie him up and subdue him. And each one of us will give you 1,100 shekels of silver. So Delilah, Delilah said to Samson, tell me the secret of your great strength and how you can be tied up and subdued. And Samson answered her, if anyone ties me with seven fresh bowstrings that have not been dried, I will become weak as any other man. So then the rulers of the Philistines brought her seven fresh bowstrings so that not one of them had been dried and she tied them to him. 
And with men hidden in the room, she called on to him and said, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. But he snapped the bowstrings as easily as a piece of string snaps when it comes close to a flame. So the secret of his strength was not discovered. Then Delilah said to Samson, you have made a fool of me and you've lied to me. Come now and tell me how you can be tied. And he said, if anyone ties me securely with new ropes that have never been used, I'll become weak as any other man. So she did that. And Delilah again said, you're making a fool of me. I can't believe you lied to me because it didn't work. So then he, he told her, braid my hair in a loom. If you put my hair in a loom, then I'll become weak. And again, she did it again. Samson was in an inappropriate relationship, so he was not able to see that she was nagging and manipulating to get her own way for her own gain. When we're in a place we shouldn't be, where we're in a place where the voice of the Lord, he never stops talking, but it's just become so dim because maybe we've distanced ourselves or we stay distracted or we stay in a place where we shouldn't be then it's easy to be manipulated by the voices of culture, the voices of the world, the voices that try to come against you that tell you that you are a blood-bought child of God. And that manipulation tries to creep into your life and tell you who you are and tries to mold you into something that God has not ordained you to be. Samson here in this story was ordained to deliver Israel from the Philistines, but because he decided that he was going to do his own thing, he tolerated something that should never have been tolerated in his life. Just like the church of Thyatira tolerated false teaching, a false prophet in their, in, a prophetess in their midst. And so they began to fall. Samson here, he began to fall into that temptation. So finally, then she said, how can you say I love you when you won't confide in me? Manipulation, right there, right there. When you won't confide in me. This third time you have made a fool of me and you haven't told me of your secret great strength. With such nagging, she prodded him day after day, day after day until he was sick to death of it. So, she, so he told her everything. No razor has ever been used on my head, he said because I have been a Nazarite dedicated to God from my mother's womb. If my head were shaved, my strength would leave me and I would become weak as any other man. And when Delilah saw that he had told her everything, told her the truth, he set, she set the plan in motion all over again. And the story of Samson goes that they came, they attacked, they captured him and he lived in captivity. They blinded him and for many years, he was weak and he was a slave. And then as the story, because God does what God does, he redeems the time. He redeems even the things that we mess up. That Samson was in a place with the Philistines and he actually killed people more at his death than he did in his lifetime. That's what it records in the book of Judges. But he never had to go through that had he not tolerated the inappropriate influence, the manipulation of a woman who he had never let in his life. So here looking at the, the church of Thyatira and the, the, the message that Jesus has for that church, Jesus wasn't saying it's a physical woman that is always gonna be behind the spirit of manipulation, behind inappropriate influence. It's not just about women, but what it's about, it's about the darkness being exposed. So how can I change? I can't change you. I can't change anyone else around me. What, who I can change is me. I can change my heart motives. I can change the way I'm speaking. I can change the way I talk to my, my boss, my coworkers, my pastor. Whenever there's someone that's receiving a prize or an accolade, I don't treat them any differently. Of course, we still honor people. That's a whole nother subject. But we do not treat people any different, whether they have money, they don't have money. They have a title, they don't have a title. We treat people with the love of God, not nagging, not trying to get our own way, not manipulating, manipulating our way to the top. That's not how this works because however you work to get something is how you're gonna have to work to maintain it. And usually you'll get exhausted, worn out and burnt out 
before you actually even get that thing that you're wanting, that you're trying to get. So how can I change? Who can I change? I can change me. So Matthew 5, 8 says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. And blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. When we ask God to purify our hearts, to say, God, you take those, those wrong actions, those wrong motives, those wrong attitudes, because I want to have an attitude towards others, towards circumstances, towards situations, the way that you do. I know that there are things that you have been called to, that I have been called to, that they're, they seem impossible, but the way to get there is not to try to make it happen yourself, to try to manipulate your way through there, to try to nag and nag and nag. No, the way to do it is to give it to God, to change your attitude and to make sure that your heart motive is pure. So the word in season this week is looking at Samson. He tolerated a woman an influence in his life, just like the church of Thyatira, they were influenced and they allowed a false prophet, a false teaching, a manipulation in their life, just like the and King Ahab allowed Jezebel to influence him to bring evil on the land. Samson allowed that and he was sleeping with a woman who was not his wife. He isolated himself from his people, from his community, and he forgot the call of God that was on his life from before he was born. And it is the same with us as a New Testament believer, staying in the place where God has for us, staying in the community, the church, the body of believers. The devil wants to isolate us, but God wants us to stay in community as a safeguard, to remember, to be reminded of the word of God, to have people in our life to teach us, to encourage us, to correct us, and he also wants us to remember the call of God on our life from before we were born. And you think, well, my parents weren't even Christians. And so how was I called before I was born? Let's go to Ephesians 1. Ephesians 1 and verse 4. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will. And he freely gave us in the one that he loves. So before the creation of the world, he created us blameless and to be holy in his sight. He wanted to adopt us before anything else in the world ever happened. He called you before the foundation of the world. And he said that he wanted you. So just like Samson was dedicated, that he was set apart, we have been dedicated and set apart. There was a plan in motion, but still Samson had to do something. What did he have to do? He had to not tolerate what God didn't tolerate. And then he would have fulfilled the plan and purpose in a better way, where he didn't have to be a slave, where he didn't have to have his eyes gouged out, where he could have been more effective, but he tolerated manipulation in his life. He tolerated sin. He got isolated from his community and he allowed sin in his life, which did nothing but steal from the call of God that was upon him, the anointing of God that was upon him. So the word in season this week is to have a pure heart like we looked at in Matthew 5, 8. Have a pure heart. I can't change anyone else. I can't change your motives. I can't change their motives. I can't change my family's motives, my boss's motives, my work's motives. I can't do any of that, but I can change mine. I can make sure that my heart is pure towards God, towards people, towards myself. And I can make sure that the things that I allow in my life are what he would allow. I can adjust my attitude to look like what he says is the standard in the word of God. So thank you for listening. Thank you for watching episode four of Seven Attitude Adjustments. Feel free to share this on your social media. And remember that every time that you tune in, that Jesus has a word in season for you.